Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today in my Algebra 1 class we are covering Chapter 4, Lesson 1, which has to do with writing linear equations in slope-intercept form. You should be on page 98 of your journals. A linear model is a linear function that models a real-life situation. In the linear function, we would of course use y equals mx plus b. And m, in this case, if it's a real-life situation, will be the rate of change. In a real-life situation, the rate of change might be something like the cost per megabyte, or miles per hour, or cost per pound, how something grows centimeters per day. Uh, all of these things would be the rate of change. The b, in this case, is your starting point. So that's how much you have at the beginning. Let's do some examples starting on page 99. In exercises one through six, write an equation of the line with the given slope and y-intercept. So remember the slope-intercept form of this equation is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. On number one, we see that the slope is zero and the y-intercept is nine. So I'm just gonna plug those numbers into the equation. So then I would write y is equal to 0x plus 9. Now since anything times 0 is 0, I can take that part out of my answer and just say that the answer is y equals 9. On number 2, I have the slope is negative 1, so I'm going to write y equals negative 1x, and my y-intercept is 0, so I'm going to write plus 0. And since that's zero, we can take that part out of the answer. So I can just write y equals negative x. Now you'll notice I didn't bother putting the one in there because um, it's, it's not needed. However, if you wrote it as y equals negative one x on a test or quiz, I would not mark it wrong. But this is a little bit cleaner and we always go for as simple as we can when we're writing our answers. Number three, y equals my slope is 2, so it'll be 2x, and my y-intercept is negative 3, so I'm just going to put a minus 3 there. And uh, some people write it this way, 2x plus a negative 3, which is fine, but once again, it's not as neat and simple as just minus 3, so it's better to write it this way. I would like for you to do numbers 4, 5, and 6 on your own, and then turn the video back on and check your answers when you're done. Okay, check your answers for numbers four, five, and six. If you got anything incorrect, see if you can find your mistake. For exercises seven through 12, it says write an equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So let's take a look at number seven. We need to find the y-intercept and we need to find the slope. And then we're gonna plug it into the equation. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So as you can see, this point here is where it crosses the y-axis. So the y-intercept is negative 1. Now we need to count our slope. So our slope is if we count up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. So our slope is negative 4 over 1. It's heading in the negative direction. You can also use the slope formula to help you find your slope if you want to do that instead. So remember the slope formula is the y's subtracted on the top, so that's going to be 3 and negative 1 on the top. And then our x is subtracted on the bottom, so negative 1 and 0 on the bottom. So if I simplify that, I get positive 4 over negative 1, which is the same as what we got when we counted, negative 4 over 1. So then we're going to write our answer now. So our answer is going to be y equals my slope is negative 4 and my y-intercept is negative 1. You'll notice that I did not write my slope as negative 4 over 1. And the reason why is because it's simpler just to write it as negative 4. Okay, let's take a look at number 8. We have our y-intercept. I'm going to write it as b instead. So our b is where it crosses the y-axis. Here's my y-axis. So this point is where it crosses the y-axis. So my b is 0. And my slope, m, is going to be counting. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 2. So it's up 4 
and over 2 in the positive direction, and that simplifies to 2. So then my answer is going to be y equals 2x. I don't need to write the plus 0 because like we did on number 2 up above, um, if you have a 0, then you can just take it out of the equation. Okay, why don't you try number 9 on your own? Stop the video and then turn it back on when you're done. All right, for number 9, I got y is equal to x plus 1. You'll notice that for my slope is 1 here, and I did not bother putting a 1 there because it's simpler not to put it in. But if you did, if you put y equals 1x plus 1, I would not mark it wrong on a test or a quiz. Okay, let's take a look at number 10. I see that my y-intercept is at positive 5, so I'm going to write that the b is 5, and now we need to find our m. So this is a little bit different because it's counting by twos. So you have to be a little bit careful when you count uh, your slope on this if you're using the graph. So since it's counting by twos, it's going up by 2, 4, 6, 8, and then half of that would be 9. So it's going up 9, and then over it's going over 1, 2, 3. So the slope is going to be 9 over 3, which simplifies just to 3. That one's a little bit harder, so uh, sometimes you do need to use the slope formula just to double check and make sure that we count it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. My y numbers are 5 and negative 4. My x numbers are 0 and 3. So five, that's going to be 5 plus 4, which is 9 over negative 3. Aha, I did make a mistake. It is heading in the negative direction, so I need to make sure that there's a negative in front of that 3 when I count my slope. So now I'm glad that I did that ex little bit of extra work. So now we have our uh, y equals m, which is negative 3x, and then our y-intercept is 5. So there's my answer for number 10. Okay, I would like for you to do numbers 11 and 12 on your own, and then turn the video back on and see if you got them correct. For number 11, I got 1 half x minus 2, and for number 12, negative 3 fourths x plus 3. In exercises 13 through 18, we are told to write an equation of the line that passes through the given points. So we are given two points here, and we need to figure out what our y-intercept is and what our slope is. So let's take a look at number 13. So our y-intercept, remember, is where it crosses the y-axis. Anytime you have a 0 as your x, then this will be what your y-axis is, or y-intercept, excuse me. So this right here tells me that the y-intercept is negative 4. So now I need to find my slope. So I can't count on the graph unless I take out graph paper. So this one, it's easiest just to use my slope formula. So remember, my y numbers go first. So this is going to be negative 4 and positive 4. And my x's go uh, on the denominator. So that's going to be 0 and 8. So if I simplify that, I get negative 8 over negative 8, which is positive 1. So now I'm ready to write my answer. y equals my slope is 1, so I don't need to write it, and then minus 4. Remember, you don't need to write it because there is an invisible 1 out in front. If you did write 1x minus 4, I would not mark it wrong on a test or a quiz. Okay, let's take a look at number 14. Here tells me what my y-intercept is. So I know that my b is negative 7. So now we need to find our slope, m. So m, let's write our skeleton slope formula there. My y numbers go on top, so we have 1 and negative 7. And my x numbers go on the bottom, so we have 2 and 0. This turns into y plus 7 on the top, so that's going to be 8. Over 2 minus 0 is 2, so that simplifies to 4. So now I'm ready to write my answer. y equals slope x and then minus 7 is my y-intercept, so 4x minus 7. Okay, let's take a look at uh, number 15. So my um, y-intercept is here, so that's going to be b is equal to 2. So now m is equal to 
2 minus 3 on the top, 0 minus 4 on the bottom. So it's going to be negative 1 over negative 4, which simplifies to positive 1 fourth. So then my answer is y is equal to 1 fourth x plus 2. All right, I would like for you to try numbers 16, 17, and 18 on your own. Okay, check your answers for numbers 16, 17, and 18, and see if you got them correct. If you did not, see if you can find your mistake. In exercises 19 through 24, they want us to write a linear function with the given values. So these problems are given a little bit differently than how uh, the points were given in 13 through 18. But we can get the same points from these two, uh, these two bits of information. If you plug in 0 for x, you're going to have an output of negative 5. And if you plug in 4 for x, you're going to have an output of negative 3. So as you can see from this, your y-intercept is going to be negative 5, because that's taken from this point here. And your slope, m, is going to be found by using the slope formula again. So my slope formula has uh, my y's on the top, so negative 5, negative 3. My x is on the bottom, 0 and 4. So that's going to be negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2, over negative 4, and that's positive 1 half. So now we're ready to write our answer. y equals 1 half x, and then minus 5 is my y-intercept. All right, uh, number 20. Our two points are negative 5 comma 5 and 0 comma 10. So my y-intercept, b, is going to be 10 because it's taken from this point here. And now we need to find the slope, m. Using our slope formula, we're going to have our y numbers on the top and our x is on the bottom. And so that gives me negative 5 over negative 5, which is positive 1. So then our answer is going to be y equals x plus 10. Remember, I don't need to write the 1 in front of the x, but I would not mark it wrong if you did on a test or a quiz. OK, I'll do one more with you, and then you can do some on your own. So number 21, we have 0 comma 5 is one of our points, and 9 comma negative 4 is the other point. So our y-intercept is 5, and our slope is going to be 5 minus a negative 4 over 0 minus 9. So that's positive 9 over negative 9, which is negative 1. So my answer is going to be y equals negative x plus 5. All right, I would like for you to do numbers 22, 23, and 24 on your own. All right, check your answers for 22, 23, and 24. If you got any of them wrong, see if you can find your mistake. Number 25 says an electrician charges an initial fee as $50 and $190 after four hours of work. Write a linear model that represents the total cost as a function of the numbers of hours worked. So our first initial fee is $50. So that would mean that if you were graphing this at zero hours, you would be charged $50. So him just walking in the door means that you're going to be charged $50. After four hours of work, so that's going to be my x, uh, the electrician is going to charge $190. So we need to write an equation of the line. We can see that our b, which is our y-intercept, is going to be 50. And I take that from this because this is my initial fee. This is the starting fee. So then we're going to have our uh, slope. And our slope, we're going to use the slope formula, just like what we've done before. And we have our y numbers on the top, 50 and 190. And then our x numbers on the denominator, so that's 0 and 4. So that if we simplify that, we're going to get negative 140 over negative 4. And that simplifies to positive 35. So that means he charges $35 every hour. So our formula is going to be y equals 35x plus 50. And so we just kind of already answered number letter B here. It says, how much does the electrician charge per hour? And we can take that from the slope. So it's going to be $35 per hour. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day.